and I'm not a really punctual person and I'm usually running kind of behind on sleep. So a lot of times I'll wake up just at the last minute right before I need to kind of roll out of bed and get the gym open. You know, once I've hit the snooze button on the alarm clock enough times, where I'm kind of in a time crunch. So then I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working with the clients for probably three or four or five hours in the first thing in the morning. During the daytime, there's always stuff that we're trying to do with the gym here. Right now we're preparing for a, a competition. We're gonna have the, uh, the USPA sanctioned meet, the uh, boss of bosses, raw powerlifting meet. Uh, that's next, next weekend, so August 2nd and 3rd. And um, you know, all the things that we've done to set this up, you know, we've been trying to set up the gym with you know, all the best equipment, not just on the platform, but in the back area where people warm up. Um, trying to set it up so it's like a production with a stage, actually two stages, and you know, everything will look really clean. We have vendors that are going to come and you know show people their uh, you know what they've got, and people are going to feel like it's a real real meet. <laughs> and I mean, I feel like that's that's just part of what the sport kind of needs. If you don't if you don't go out of your way to make people feel like powerlifting is a real sport, then you know how do you you know how could I possibly expect it to get taken seriously by people who aren't even interested in it? Hi, I'm Emily Hu, and I'm a powerlifter, and I've been training with Dan for about a year and a half now. Before I met Dan, I actually didn't really know anything about powerlifting, so I think it's pretty amazing. He uh, trained me, I think, once or twice, just for free, and I signed up for a powerlifting meet on a whim, and Dan took me through the meet, and I actually I won the meet after like knowing Dan for about one week. Like two years ago, I never bench pressed, and I didn't know how to deadlift properly, and I, I, my squats were not to the ground. So in less than two years, I've gone from not really working out properly to having like a bunch of records, which I think is pretty awesome. But what's been cool is I didn't really have any expectation of this. We started training together about a year and a half ago. He's got a really good fundamental technique. He never misses workouts, and uh, I mean one of the things that helps her that, that is for sure part of the explanation that a lot of a lot of people can take away. Because usually when we make just kind of like linear progress with her, she's pretty much going up like one or one and a half pounds on her bench sets like every week. So it's tough for, for girls, especially if girls are benching, you know, like 135 or 170 or something like that is their max. And they're making like five pound incremental jumps. That's, that's pretty, it's a pretty big jump, just like percentage wise. I just benched 225. Uh... I have the American record in my weight class at 209, and the world record's 231, so we'll see what I do this weekend. Um, hopefully I can deadlift 350, squat maybe 250, and uh, maybe bench 230. So once I you know, finish with the personal training stuff, I've got to get on the computer and check emails. That'll be something I do because I'm you know, I'm running the business here. My wife gets to take, gets to take care of a lot of the people who are inquiring about our gym, and really primarily because I run, you know, some online training, some online coaching for people. Some of the guys that I've been training online, I mean, they get, you know, they're really stoked about, you know, the training and the progress. So just kind of getting the chance to not just, you know, have to learn everything on their own, but to get to uh, really like a head start by just learning some of the stuff that an experienced lifter can teach them. You know, it really helps people make progress and not just, you know, not just suffer with the same pitfalls as you know like what you try to do on your own kind of leads to a lot of times sometimes the uh the drawback of being at the gym and having people come in and lift all day is when you're trying to get work done you know everyone wants to talk to you and you know for two minutes every day for them it makes a big difference if you talk to them but then you add that up for 
hundred people coming into the gym, it's hard to get, you know, some time to get some work done. So sometimes we'll come back here and get a little privacy, but right now you can see the place is kind of loaded up. We've got all the t-shirts that we, we bought for the meet for other stuff. Let me see back here. And this is cool. We've got a best lifter awards for the meet this weekend. We've got some, uh, <laughs> best lifter awards that are kind of like, I don't know. These look like, you know, hammers from some sort of fantasy movie. But these things are pretty legit. And so we got three of these for the best woman and then the best best male lifters Saturday and Sunday. Trying to get too catabolic in the middle of the workout here. thing was just hitting the uh, competition style, uh, benching with a pause. Um, like I said before, this was the kind of like the final workout that I've been trying to build up to, a max for, so made 534, uh, a little PR. And uh, now, the second exercise is hitting the close grip for me. So usually what I'll do is I'll train the uh, competition style bench first every workout, and then I'll, uh, then I'll pick a second exercise that I'm kind of focusing on, and I'll do that for a few weeks in a row. Uh, when I bench twice a week, and uh, sometimes I'll alternate the second second exercises. So I might do close grip, and you know, I might do dumbbells on the other workout as the second exercise. So right now it's close grip, and I've been trying to get these ones up to a max too. So uh, hit the 495 for a double as a PR for a two rep set, and then this set will be uh, about 513. So uh, yeah, going for some some maxes here. One of the best best, best messages that I ever learned. You know, one of those like epiphany moments came when I was reading one of Louis Simmons' articles that was, uh, I think the article was something like what it takes to be the best. And it's basically, he's he's kind of highlighting and comparing and contrasting uh, Chuck Vogelpohl, you know, who's a, like a full meat powerlifter, you know, legendary guy, 
Amy Weisenberg, she was a you know top female records, and uh, George Halbert, who was a bench world record guy, and uh, you know he's talking about all three of them. And the, the point that, that Louis makes is, no matter what these guys are feeling like, they go to the gym and they hit it hard every day. And the take-home message to me was, like I said, it was like kind of an epiphany. If you don't feel good, but you still train, like to me that, that would never, I never used to would have done that. You know, if I was like, you know, my triceps feel a little tight from bench day seven days ago, I'm gonna put it off a couple, you know, the day or two. But once I kind of let that go and I read that, started, uh, you know, training, no matter how I felt. Suddenly I'll be making PRs on days I didn't even feel that good. And uh, yeah, that just like changed my whole training, training around altogether. So that's something, when people ask me like, what's, a, what's maybe one of the most important pieces of advice for anyone, is it, it just doesn't matter how you feel. You know, no matter how you feel, you go and you focus. You know, you could be, you know, sore where your muscles aren't even, you know, fully strong, but if, you're, if your execution is on point, you're gonna be hitting big weights. So that's, that's such a big one for me now. It's like, it doesn't matter how you feel. And I'll tell people that, you know, and they'll feel bad because, you know, because I'll be basically saying, you know, stop being a pussy. It doesn't matter how you feel, but it's the truth. You just, you just go and hit your, hit your weights.